بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and this is another episode or another session of التعبير القرآني we are continuing from where we left off yesterday and yesterday we were discussing uh, just continuing off the same idea that Dr. Fadil had mentioned initially and the idea being that if you were to look at any style in the Quran, any particular style, you would find it that it is appropriate to the context in which it is found. That is the idea. And he mentioned several things. So he mentioned Tawqeed. We started with Tawqeed, then we went to Istifham. And then after Istifham, we talked about Taqdeem and Ta'akhir. And I think that's where we had stopped yesterday. The idea that also at Taqdeem and at Ta'akhir, the style of at Taqdeem and at Ta'akhir is very appropriate within the context that it is found. And he gave some examples uh, regarding that. And we completed with the last example where he mentioned that sometimes Allah would mention something in, a, in one place and he doesn't mention it in another place that is exactly similar to that one, to that first place. So you have two places that are very similar, but one place has something extra. And that is because of the context, because the concept, context necessi necessitated the extraness of whatever has been added. So the, the, uh, he was comparing these two ayat, one in Surah Al-Baqarah and the other one in Surah Ali Amran, where the ibara, the phrase, وَلَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ was added in Surah Ali Amran, but it wasn't there in Surah Baqarah, even though everything else was the same. So that's the point that he was making, all right? So I hope so far we're trying to understand what he's trying to say. Now, he's going to conclude this section. We are, we are on the part where now he's concluding that. So he, he mentioned the idea. He gave examples of different styles in which this idea applies. And now he's concluding that idea for us. So just to understand where we are as far as uh, the text is concerned. Okay. Oops. Okay. So, who wants to participate? You can raise your hand. Or you can unmute yourself. Today is a, is a little bit of a, or oh, somebody just called them listener mode. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I get it. You're just listening. Okay, fine. No problem. Sister and mom, can I try once? I'm not pretty sure about it. But... Yes, please. I know this is a hard one. This is a hard section, but we'll break it down, inshallah. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do dozens of mistakes, but I'm sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. Okay. I was feeling many shit on it. كل ذلك يدعوه وضعا فنيا في غاية الرو... روعة ال... روعة والجمال روعة والروعة روعة روعة والجمال yes. ثم هو يجمع بين ضروب القول المختلفة مختلف 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 فتي فتي سوري مختلف فتي يو يؤلف بينها في حشد فني اجيب لا لا يملك العرف لا يملك العرف بشيء من اسرار من اسرار اسرار التركيب الا ان يسجد لصاحب هذا الكلام لصاحب هذا الكلام اجلالا وخشوعا yes beautiful you are worried for nothing i'll just read this out to billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim allah nazal ahsan al-hadith kitab mutashabih متشابه مثاني مثانية تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم 
ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله ذلك هدى الله يهدي به من يشاء به من يشاء ومن يدلل الله فما له من هاد Beautiful. All right. So now uh, he says كل ذلك يضعه وضعا فنيا في غاية الروعة والجمال and all that He places it beautifully, artistically, in extreme magnificence and beauty. All right. So basically, uh, he's he's trying to summarize like how all these styles are placed so beautifully. Uh, they are so different, but they're all placed in the context in which they belong to in extreme beauty and extreme magnificence. So that's what he's saying. So... If we had to break down, and I think we've come across this structure, a similar structure before, this kullu dhalika, something, something. Uh, so let's try and break it down and see what happens. So kullu, of course, this is a mudaf ile and it's a fasrafa. So this is going to be mudaf and it's going to be a mubtada. So this is a mubtada. And then kullu um, dhalika, mudaf, mudaf ile. So this, this whole thing becomes a mubtada. And then whatever comes after it, this jumla fi'aliya is al khabar fi mahali rafa. So we've already figured out the main parts of this jumla ismiya. Okay, so kullu dhalika, and then this other part is al khabar. Then in al khabar is actually a jumla fi'aliya. Yada'uhu, wada'a, yada'u. He places. So yada'uhu, wada'an, fanniyan. So yada'u is a fi'al, the fi'al is the inside pronoun huwa. And of course, this who is the attached pronoun, which is the maf'ul bihi. All right. So that's a simple st structure there. Then you come to wada'an. You look at ya ba'u wada'an. Wada'a wada'an. It has the same roots. So that tells you that this wada'an is from the same root letters as ya ba'u. And therefore, this becomes our maf'ul mutlaq. Right. So we understand that concept of maf'ul mutlaq. Dharaba. ضربن وضع وضعا so this is مفعول مطلق and now this فنيا is the صفة to وضعا alright so وضعا فنيا artistic يعني beautiful placement and again remember with مفعول مطلق we don't really translate it so I don't say يضع يضعه وضعا he places it a placement it doesn't we don't translate it like, we just like we know it adds emphasis So we'll, we'll just try to add emphasis to it, to it. So he beautifully places it, you can say. Or he places it in a beautiful, artistic way. Right? And then you have فِي غَيَةِ الرَّوْعَةِ وَالْجَمَالِ So فِي حَرْفِ جَارْ غَيَةِ اسم مجرور غَيَةِ مُضَافِ رَوْعَةِ مضاف إِلَيْهِ وَوْ حَرْفِ عَتِفْ الْجَمَالِ الجمال مَعْتُوفْ تُو رَوْعَةِ So this part, this whole part, is my متعلق. Right. So I have there that that's my mutalak. Is that part clear? Is there any questions there? I think uh, this wasn't. So what is what is <laughs> raw? Raw, magnificence, yeah. wonder, okay. something amazing. Okay. Rawa. Mm. Rawa. Okay. Yeah. And Raya, Raya is like a purpose or a goal, right? Or an extreme, uh, an end, the end of something. So the end oh. of beauty and end of magnificence. Or you can just say extreme beauty and extreme magnificence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, where are we putting this maful mutlak in the translation by ex putting extreme? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or you can just find another clever way of adding it in a way that okay. it just so it shows emphasis. Yeah. Okay. So now this rawati is a mudaf, right? Mudaf, mudaf, ilahi, rawati, yes. This so is how mudaf. would we translate as extreme beauty and extreme magnificence? Doesn't it sound like a Mosul Sifa? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 
some sometimes you have to make sacrifices when it comes to translation because just so that it makes sense in English. So you can say the end of beauty and the end of uh, magnificence. But oh. what is the end of something? It's the extreme end of something. So you, that's why I'm just saying it as extreme uh, beauty. Can and... I see something? Yes. Yes. Uh, utmost is good. Yes. Utmost beauty. Yeah, I like that. Utmost beauty and magnificence. Okay. Just... Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I, I think I... Uh, Ustaz one time says that sometimes uh, mood idafa can be translated like uh, maqsul sifa. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's there's a possibility of that, and especially if it comes as um, there's a kind of idafa that yani you kind of do that. Shabihun bil idafa. I don't want to get into that because it's a, a little bit of a complex topic. But yeah, like the idea is if it if it's so weird saying it in English, like if you say uh, extreme of beauty and magnificence doesn't sound right in English. Or if you say the goal of beauty, it becomes the goal of beauty and magnificence. Maybe it makes a little bit of sense. You can try and translate it like that. But sometimes if the, the meaning is not lost, if the meaning is does not change, for example, if I say in extreme beauty and magnificence or in utmost beauty and magnificence, it doesn't change the meaning of, for example, if I said uh, uh, in the end of beauty and magnificence, it's the same thing. Atmost and the end, it's the same thing, right? So I haven't changed the meaning. I've only changed the structure in English. In Arabic, it is mudaf mudafile, but in English, I've made it mausof sefa, but I haven't changed the meaning. So those are some of the sacrifices you need to make when translating. Like you can you can afford to, to lose the, the structure as long as you understand that this is idafa, but uh, I'm translating it this way in order just to make sense of it. Yeah. Any other questions there? I think you're translating it as a, like the essence of the right superlative, most beautiful, or at most magnificent. So, oh, and then there's that. <laughs> yeah, that's how I mean, that's how I saw it. Maybe it's being translated like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's because raya means the end of something or the goal of something, but here it actually means the end. So, the the end of beauty means like the extreme beauty. Like, like if you say, um, how do I describe it? Like if there's a spe spectrum, right? A scale. Mm -hmm. Number one is least beautiful. Number 10 is most beautiful. So if I say you are at the end of that spectrum when it comes to beauty, I'm actually saying you're on the extreme of beauty. Like you're the most beautiful person because you're at the end, Right. So that's kind of like how you understand the word raya. Fi raya ti rawati wal jamal. Also, fi muntaha. Sorry? Like something ultimate? Yes, ultimate. Oh. Yeah. Also, there's another phrase that we say, fi muntaha al jamal. Anti, fi muntaha al jamal. Muntaha, the end of something. You are at the end of beauty. Like. Oh. Everybody else is at the beginning of beauty, but you, mashallah, you are at the end of beauty. So you are extremely beautiful. So that's a phrase they use. Fi muntaha something. Fi muntaha al jamal. Fi muntaha. You can just put any other mustard there. Yeah. Fi muntaha riqa. You're extremely thin. You're. Fi muntaha al badana. You're extremely fat. <laughs> I don't know. You can just. Use that word. Fi raya or fi muntaha. That's okay. how it is used. Hmm. So it is more like an Arabic expression, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. So to okay. show extreme. Okay. Hmm. And this, uh, sorry, I didn't, I missed that. Fi rayati is the uh, sifa of wad'an, right? Is it? Mm. في في غاية is just متعلق. This whole phrase is متعلق. But فنيا is the صفة to وضع. Okay. وضع okay. is مفعول مطلق and فنيا is the صفة to وضع. 
Okay. And this one is a mutallib to the fail? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mutallib to the fail. Any other clarifications there? Yeah, you can practice using fi muntaha or fi because it's something that is used in MSA a lot. Fi muntaha or fi raya, something, extreme something, the end of that. All right. Um, we have SS. I don't know if you want to read or if you have a question. I can read if you uh, when this time, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's let's finish this part and then you can read the next part, inshallah, if you have time. Okay. Okay, so we go to the next session. Then he says, Oh, I deleted a couple of things here. So, Something is messed up here. بَيْنَ ذُرُوبِ الْقَوْلِ الْمُخْتَلِفَةِ وَيُؤَلِّفُ بَيْنَهَا فِي حَشْدٍ فَنِّيٍّ عَجِيبٍ لَا يَمْلِكُ الْعَارِفُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ أَسْرَارِ التَّرْكِيبِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْجُدَ لِصَاحِبِ هَذَا الْكَلَامِ إِجْلَالًا وَخُشُوعًا Then he says, then he gathers this, he brings together these styles, okay, he combines this uh, styles of speech, different styles of speech, and he published that publishes them in a beautiful, artistic, wonderful composition. Anyone who recognizes anything, so a person who recognizes anything from the secrets of this arrangement, or of this organization, or of this order, cannot help themselves except except to prostrate to the one or the owner of this speech uh, in show of uh, ijlal, mm, uh, reverence, wa khushu' humility. Okay, let me replay, re 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 say that again. Let me say that again. So he then uses these different st uh, styles of speech and he publishes, publishes them in a beautiful artistic composition, if you will, and no anyone who recognizes anything from the secrets of this organization or this order cannot help themselves but to prostrate to the owner of these words uh, in humility, in reverence and in humility. Okay, so that's what he's saying. In other words, let me paint for you a picture. It's like in, in cooking, for example, you have different styles. For example, you have desi uh, cuisines, you have different desi types of cooking, there's a lot of spice, it's delicious, but it's very spicy. Then you have maybe like Turkish cuisines, it's not spicy at all, but it's still delicious. You have Chinese cuisines, you have, um, I don't know, Caribbean, you have different places, you have African cuisines, they're all different, they're all tasty in their own right, but they're all different styles of cooking, styles of preparing things, style, different styles. Now, on its own, it's still delicious. On its own, this style. Then, what Dr. Fazil is telling us is that he takes these this different styles of cooking. What happens when you have like an Italian dish and then you mix it with a little bit of African? Now you have Afro-Italian fusion. Now it's a, it's a totally different kind of flavor now, isn't it? On its own, Italian is great. African is great. But then you put them together somehow and magic happens. Or you take a little bit of desi here and you mix a little bit of Chinese here. You mix, like you take all these different styles and you start creating fusions. You start creating magic. You start creating something extraordinary. So that's what Dr. Fadil is saying. He says, then Allah takes these different styles. So he takes tawkid, he takes istifham, he takes a little bit of taqdim and ta'akhir, puts them together, makes this amazing fusion of styles. And he just comes out into this artistic, wonderful composition that anyone, anyone at all who recognizes any of these secrets, like if you look at the order and you see, whoa, you recognize something at all of this order, you would be forced to do. You can't help yourself except that you do the sujood, that you prostrate yourself uh, to Allah, the owner 
of the speech. That what that's what he's saying. I think the message is kind of clear, like what he what he's trying to say. All right, is that part clear? Like what uh, Dr. Fazil, uh, in terms of meaning, before we even break down what is going on in this eye, like do we understand what he's saying? Yes. Okay, great. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so that's what he's saying in this particular paragraph. And actually he quotes this ayah where he says, Allah nazzala, Allah is the one who sent Ahsan al-Hadith, the best kind of speech. Kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya. A book uh, that is scripture that is consistent and it uh, it is off repeated and draws lessons. It has lessons in it, right? Um, then he says, The skins of those who fear their Lord quiver, shiver, tremble when they hear about this book. Like they hear the Quran being read and their skins start to tremble and shiver. Subhanallah, what the description in the Quran, just the way it is describing itself. Then their skins and their hearts soften to the mention of Allah. Like they hear Allah is being mentioned and you can feel their skin softening and their hearts softening from the mention of Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. He guides whomever he wishes. And whoever Allah allows to go astray or and whoever Allah uh, strays, then no one can guide him. He has absolutely no, absolutely no guide. Subhanallah. May Allah make us of those who are guided and may Allah guide us. Amin, Ya Rabbi. So that's uh, what's happening there. So now let's break it down. Let's go bit by bit. So thumma, harf adhuf, it's a harf, we skip it. Hua, because it's the first rafa. Uh, so we know this is our mubtada. All right. Then whatever comes after it, this sentence is going to be our khabar fi mahalli rafa uh, of huwa. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And then yajma'u bayna dhurub al-qawl al-muhtalifa wa yu'allifu baynaha fi hashdin fanniyin ajib. I'm going to go all the way up to that. And I'm going to say that's my khabar of huwa. Okay, so that's the khabar of huwa. Now we enter inside the khabar of huwa. And what do we see? We see a fi'al. Yajma'u. So this is a jumla fi'aliya. Yajma'u, the, the, it's the fi'al. The fa'il is the inside pronoun. Huwa, huwa, yajma'u. Bayna dhurubi al-qawli al-mukhtalifati. You notice that this is a continuous chain. How do I know? Bayna is a special mudaf, right? Bayna is a special mudaf, which means dhurubi is a mudaf ilay. But dhurubi is light, no al, so that's my other mudaf. Al-qawli is mudaf ilay. But then I look at al-mukhtalifati. Al-mukhtalifati matches four properties with al-qawli. So al-mukhtalifa and al-qawl, mawsuf sifa. So I have mudaf, mudaf ilay. Then again mudaf, mudaf ilay. And then this and this, mawsuf sifa. So this is one bucket. So we'll see. One bucket. And because it's a, a chain idafa, that's going to be my muta'alliq. This is muta'alliq biyajma'u. All right? So this is sentence number one. We can call this sentence number one. Because we have harf atif here. And this harf atif is connecting this sentence to this sentence, to the next sentence. So yu'allifu is sentence number two. And inside sentence number two, you have jumla uh, fi'aliya. So yu'allifu, huwa yu'allifu. Allafa yu'allifu. So the inside pronoun is huwa. The fa'il is the inside pronoun huwa with the dua. You alif. Then bayna again. Bayna is coming again. Bayna ha. This is my muta'alliq. Because it's my special mudaf, which is a dharf. So this is muta'alliq. Uh, bil fi'l. Bi yu alifu. Muta'alliq number one, you can say. And then fi hashadin fanniyin ajibin. That's my, uh, sorry, from here. That's my muta'alliq bil khabar number two. Of course, fi harf jar hashadin, hashadin, sorry, is majroor. Hashadin matches with fanniyin. Fanniyin matches with ajibin. So, sifa number one, 
صفة نمبر 2 حشتين فنين عجيبين ودين ودين متاع متل بصفة of ضروب because ال مختلفة ب صفة of ضروب because yeah Okay, I see what you mean because alcohol is masculine. Yes, you're right. You're right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so this is not the mausuf sifa here situation. The maus mukhtalifa is the is the sifa of oh, what's happening? Okay. Mukhtalifa is the sifa of the whole of this idaf of this idafa here, which is durub al qawl. So the whole um idafa is being described by mukhtalifa. And again, how do we know that? Thank you, uh, silent listener, for uh, pointing listener mode, <laughs> pointing at that out. So durub is uh broken human non-human broken plural, so we treat it as singular feminine, and that's why it's al mukhtalifa t. Because it has a tamar bute, so this is a sifa to this whole idafa. Yes, thank you for, for that correction. Yeah, that's right. How are we doing so far? How's that part? Before we go into the next part that is going to... Uh, so spin our heads. Yes. Uh, this baina, how will you translate as baina? Between. All right. So then he brings together the different styles different styles mm -hmm. the way we are translating by I'm like so you can say he combines between different uh, styles of speech he combines between different st styles of speech or he brings together different styles of speech because if you say uh, if you use uh, brings together you can use between but if you use yes. combine then you see you can be able to use between between okay and the next uh, bainaha is uh, this one again. Uh, why we are using a uh, bainaha here again? Uh, because and you alifu is uh, composing or publishing, sister? Huh? Composing, publish. I'm just saying publishing because it makes like I'm trying to capture the way he speaks because he speaks so passionately. Like <laughs> like when you read it, you're like, oh, he's like going all out. So I'm trying to just kind of like match his energy. So but yeah, uh, he it means composing between them. Uh, he publishes them. Baina ha ha means it is going back to مختلف uh call مختلفتي. Uh, it's going back to the durub. Yeah, it's going back, going to, back to the different durub. styles. Yeah, yeah. So this one you will uh, translate it as uh, and he publishes them in a hashdin. Uh, hashdin is together. Or you can just use composers. Oh, he like composes. the way he, yeah, the way he writes them, the way he puts them together, the way he combines them uh, between them, or he composes between them. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird. Yeah. It's it's difficult to translate in English. Uh, so he publishes them in uh, in gathering uh the hashdin fanin. I'm not able to translate fi hashdin fanin ajibin. So hashdin, I will just translate it as a composition. I know it means like something, a gathering or something brought together, like if you put things together. But then that doesn't make sense. So composition makes more sense. Like something that is com composed or compiled, or you can even say compilation, a composition or a compilation. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Not okay, thank you. Yeah, you get it? Okay. Yeah. So go, it goes back. The half baina comes with you alifu. You alifu baina. Baina is not a harf. Baina is an ism. It's a dharf. Between. Like it's a special mudaf. Baina is a special mudaf. Okay. So just remember the example I gave you about the different kinds of foods. So that's what he's trying to say. He's saying that you have all these different kinds of styles of writing. You have different kinds of styles of writing. On their own, they're magnificent. On their own. 
If you just use them the way they are, beautiful. But then you take istifham and you combine it with something else. And then now you have all this, this hashdin fani and ajib. Because now you have brought together, you have you have done jama'ah and you have done yu'allifu bainahuma. Now you have done ta'lif of istifham and tawkid and now you have produced hashdin faniyin ajibin. That's what he's saying. Combines with, yes. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean, Fauzia. Okay. So, um, Fauzia is saying that in hands where uh, you alifu when it comes with baina it means combines with exactly yeah so that's yeah so combining with so combining the different kinds of styles together into a artistic wonderful compilation or composition um any other questions there yeah? We all good? Okay. All right, great. So now we're going to the next sentence. And he says, لا يملك العارف بشيء من أسرار التركيب إلا أن يسجد لصاحب هذا الكلام إجلالا وخشوعا. Now let's break one thing. When you just read that entire sentence, you notice one thing. You notice that this is a template of لا إلا. Nothing but or only or except. Okay, so that's the that's the first thing you noticed. I'm I'm looking at that kind of a structure. Although there's so much, this is like um there's so much happening in between, so sometimes we can lose sight of these simple templates that we have learned. Because look, look at what he said before Illa. Like he said so much. And then after Illa, he also said quite a bit. Right? But that's the simple structure. It's a simple negation of La Illa. All right. So, لا يملك العارف, this word malaka yamliku has many meanings. All right? It has the meaning of owning, possessing. But then, when it comes in a neg negation like this, when it comes with, an, uh, with a la nafia, لا يمليكو, it means you, you cannot control yourself. You cannot hold yourself back. You cannot pull yourself back. You cannot control yourself. So, that's th the meaning of la yamliku. Whenever you see this kind of structure, I mean, sometimes it could just mean he doesn't possess, he doesn't own. But if he comes in this kind of a structure, then it means he cannot control himself. He cannot help himself. That's where I'm getting the meaning of uh, he cannot help himself. Like you, you can't help yourself, but do something, right? So that's the kind of meaning that comes with this word, Yamliko. It's important to know which meaning is being mentioned here. Because again, if you are to use the, normal meaning of malaka yamliku to own then you you won't get the meaning you'll be like the own the one who knows doesn't own anything from the secrets of organization except it doesn't make sense it doesn't own anything no it doesn't mean own here yeah? it means to you cannot help yourself you cannot control yourself right and then al-arifu normally al-arif if you see this word in msa it means an expert it means somebody who has mastered something. So al-arif, uh, a knower, an expert, al-arif. But in this context, I don't think he's referring to that idea of an expert. I think he's just meaning the one who knows anything. Right? Anyone who knows anything or even an expert. You can even use it as an expert. Like it doesn't change much, much because it says the expert who knows anything from the secrets of its organization will have will, will cannot control themselves cannot help themselves but to prostrate so it even adds more meaning i think if you use it as expert so that's 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 either way so you can use it as just the isim file of uh, this word always confuses me which gives you arif the noah or you can use it in the known meaning in msa as the expert Right. So la yamliku, malaka yamliku said this is the fa'il. Of course, al arifu is the outside doer of yamliku. So this is the outside fa'il. All right. That's why it's arifu. Bishayin min asrarihi. Now you have to ask yourself, this ba, what kind of a ba is this? Is it making it mutaliq? And if it is mutaliq, it's mutaliq to what? Now 
for me personally, I think this bar is Zaida. Uh, like it's it's just adding emphasis. Because if I remove it, how do I know that it's bar Zaida? Because if I remove the bar from the sentence, then it doesn't change the meaning. So that becomes my maf'ul bihi. The no the, the expert um or the one who knows anything, the expert of anything, right? So the one who knows anything or the expert of anything. Uh, as min asrar al-tarkibi this then is my mutaalliq all right so this arif in that sense is acting as a fi'l and then if i'm to remove this ba za'ida shay'an becomes my maf'ul bihi because arif is acting as a fi'l la yamliku al-arif shay'an okay but then if the because the ba is there is za'ida, it's adding emphasis. La yamliku al-arifu bishay'in. The expert of anything whatsoever at all. Like anything, even the smallest bit. Anyone who knows even the smallest bit, min asrari tarkib, from the secrets of its or for, for, from the secrets of, of, of its order and its organization, will, cannot help themselves. So you get how that's happening. And then min asrari tarkib, this is like we've said, this is my mutaalliq, to yamliku. Or, yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Al-arif min asrar. Yeah, you can say this is mutaalliq to al-arif. Bishay'in min actually, it's mutaalliq to shay'in. Something from the secrets. So this min asrar al-tarkib is mutaalliq to actually this part. Which is interesting. <laughs> So again, you see how it's important to know the mutaadik is attached to what? Right? Shay'an min asrari tarkib. So if you have to remove the ba, it becomes shay'an min asrari tarkib. Something from the secrets of the organization. So this min asrari tarkib is mutaadik to that. I have talked quite a bit and I don't know if that made any sense. Maybe there are some confusions. I don't know. Yes. Can you take min asrar al as sifa of shayin? No, that won't make sense. Uh, something which is, no, no. It's no, min okay. tabi'idiya. It's min that means apart from anything oh, from. Okay. From, okay. Yeah. Because if it was uh, a sifa, then you, you, you probably try and put in which or that in there and see if it makes sense. So you'd be like, be shayin with anything that. Uh, is from the secrets of organization, maybe, but it's a bit of a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch. I think just mutaalliq is straightforward. Any other questions? I don't know if that part was clear. Bishayin is a maf'ul bihi then, Sisullah? Yes, it's maf'ul bihi of al arif. And the ba is za'ida. Actually, yeah, it's it's fi mahalli nasab maf'ul bihi, yes. Even though it ha it is majroor because of the ba. Maks yani majroor ya majroor. Are we good there so far? Okay. Then he says, illa except. So this is where the expect except part comes in. And yes, Judah. Okay. So we know illa is adatu istithna. We've talked about this and we've talked about the three different uh, ways in which we do the i'rab of what comes after illa. And we see that what comes after illa is masdar mu'awwal, is a compound ism. It's an plus its victim, right? So this together would be our mustathna minhu fi mahalli nasab. Because here now it doesn't show, right? So illa and yes, Judah. And yes, Judah, yes, Judah is a fa'al, right? Uh, and then the fa'al is the inside pronoun huwa, huwa yes, Jud. Li sahibi hadha al-kalami. Li harf jar sahibi majroor. Sahibi mudaf hadha mudaf ilay. Hadha ismu al-ishara al-kalam musharu ilay. So this, again, one bucket. And that is our jar majroor, muta'alliq to yes, Judah. So, illa and yes, Judah accept that he prostrates to the owner of 
this speech. And then he adds, Ijlalan wa khushu'an. Of course, you see, this is nasab. That means you have to, in, in your list of the things that are nasab, you have to start checking which one this belongs to. Is it maf'ul bihi, maf'ul lahu, maf'ul fihi? Is it istithna? Is it munada? Is it maf'ul mutlaq? What is it? Then you will come to realize that this is actually a hal. Why? Because uh, out of reverence or in reverence, how are you doing the, the act of prostration? So it's the, what is it? Is the, the sahibul hal of the pronoun inside yasjud. The action is prostrating. How is he prostrating? So it answers the question, how? How is he prostrating? Ijlalan wa khushu'an. Out of reverence and humility. Okay. So this is hal number one. And hal, oh, and ma'atuf basically. Because wa, harf. Atuf, khushu'an, ma'atuf to ijlal. This is just hard. How are we doing so far? Is it is it clear? Because I'm really worried. I don't know this section. A bit. And you guys are not asking me stuff today, so I don't know how I'm doing. Okay. I'm yes. Glad that is clear. yes, go on. It's I'm making sense. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's making okay. Alhamdulillah, it is making sense. I was a bit worried today because I thought this. This part was going to be, because also the next part is going to be a little bit difficult, but we'll see how, what we can be able to do. Uh, Sister Elham, I was only uh, concerned about this Bishay in. Earlier, I mm -hmm. thought this would be as a Mutalik Bilfail one. And yeah. uh, I thought this is Mutalik to the Yamliku, the figure. Yeah, so that, that was our understanding when we were doing like the Baina program, because we just learned Fail, Fail, Mutalik. And things was easy because every time you see a jar majroon, mutaalliq to the fa'il. And it was easy peasy. But now we are advancing and we are realizing that jar majroor can be mutaalliq to anything. Right? We've come across this concept where this yeah. jar majroor is just attaching itself to a hal, to a something else, to, a, you know, like it's everywhere. So you, are, you have to ask yourself, if I attach it to the fa'il, what meaning does it give me? If I attach it to, for example, here the fa'id, what meaning does it give me? So if you're confused that you don't know which uh, this muta'alik is attached to what, then try and translate it based on your understanding. So let's say if you're understanding bishay'in as muta'alik to yamliku, then remove the, the arif, okay, and just attach it and say yamliku bishay'in. Yamliku bishay'in. What, what, does, what would that mean? Like he controls with something he, he he cannot control himself with something like maybe it makes sense but to me uh i would look at it as the um yamliku arifu actually yeah why not why did i make... okay i think you can i think you can look at it as mutalik to yamliku but i was looking at it as this ba is zaida because you can actually say yamliku arifu shay'an you can it can be the maf'ul bihi of yamliku sorry i think initially i said yam uh, is the maf'ul bihi of arif but i i meant it as maf'ul bihi of yamliku he cannot control himself with anything at all right malakadi no i think that it is going okay. to arif because if you say he arif? has no okay. he has no control mm -hmm. or anything then okay at all then the meaning will be at all, that he has no control at all mm. over the asrar, the taqib And this is not what we are suggesting. We are suggesting even if he knew a bit of it, even yeah. if he knew a bit of it. So if you have this translation, a bit of it, then the shayin should go to Arif. Yeah. Because it is not hinting on the control, rather it is hinting on the knowledge. No matter how mm. meager it is, it will have an impact. I think this is what he intends to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what he's trying to say. I, I got confused a little bit because I was trying to translate Bishay in as Muta'alik to Yamliku. And I'm not I'm not able to even, I don't know how to translate it. Like he cannot control anything at all. That's not 
It's, he's yeah. not saying that he cannot control anything. He's saying that yeah. the owner cannot control the... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit confused yeah, I mean, myself. Yeah. Because so I, I, the I, owner also, cannot control at all. He cannot uh, control anything from... Or, yeah, anything. It, he, Even yeah, so he cannot control me, himself. It makes sense. The owner, he's doing an act of controlling. So mm -hmm. it uh, so then certainly the action is taking place of control of anything. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't it go to um, Yamliku only? No, it goes to the Arif because the Arif knows even the little bit. Yani al Arif will be shayin. A know yeah. of something small, a know of anything at all. That is al Arif will be shayin. Min asrari tarkib. The Noah is the one who knows something small. It's not the control. Of anything, it is the knowing of anything. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so that's okay. what I was saying. You have to know this. Yeah. It's going to mm. what, and then try and translate yeah. it, and then see yeah. if because, it makes sense. You know, uh, uh, sister Lam, if you place this bishayin with yamliku, and then mm -hmm. okay, you say yamliku bishayin arifu min asra al So uh, my question is. Uh, to the sister who is suggesting it and maybe thinking on it, how would you translate this whole sentence? Oh, how would you translate this sentence? The knowledgeable person doesn't control anything out of uh, the secrets of organization. Does, does it what it means? That he mm. has no control over the Asar Tarkib? He doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have any control, then how will he understand? <laughs> what do you mean? How will he understand? I mean, he, he has a getaway, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think, so So Fahima, say the Fahima, look, this is, you, you just have to understand this mutalik. If I attach it to a fail, then does it mm -hmm. make sense attached to that fail? And, I, I, and then I try to translate it being attached to that fi'al and I see if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, because look, there's an illa here. So if you say that the Noah um, um, doesn't own or doesn't control anything from the secrets of the organization except something, then this something is what he can control, right? But then okay, here, okay, okay. you see? Yeah, yeah so yeah, it yeah. has to make sense the entire sentence. Yes, yes. And yes, that yes. doesn't make sense. Right. So, Sister Alham, this is uh, the mutalif to Arif. Yes. Okay? And it yeah, is sure. not, it, it's, it's, it's maful, it's not the maful bihi of Yamliku? It's maful bihi of Arif. Ar because the ba is Zaida. Maful bihi, bihi of Yamliku? Uh, al Arifu shayan. Al Arifu, al Arifu. Mm. The maful of Arifu. What does he know? He knows anything from the yeah. Asar Tarki. Oh, so it could be possible, Sister Lam, that maful can be of anything, like how it is mutaliq to something. Maf'ul no. Can be of something. Okay, so remember when we were doing, the, and we said there are certain words, there are certain isms that act as fi'l, and you said okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, I got it, yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is, this is what okay. is happening. Okay. So in hands, Arif, say, Arif comes with ba, comes and with ba. Yeah, it I was is wondering familiar. Familiar. I was yeah, I was a yeah. That that just popped in my mind right now. I was wondering, does it come with ba? It does. Arif uh, comes with ba and yeah. with Arif also. This is Arif. Uh, it comes with ba. It's uh, familiar, conversant, acquainted. Okay. Then no, in that, that case, yeah, it's going to be mutaliq. And that sister, uh, don't you think it comes with a passive, passive like urifabi, like something which is known. As far as I could recall, it comes with passive. Urifa B. It is known. Let me just check. Hmm. So, but we don't have the passive uh, participle here. We have, we don't have Ismail Maful. We have Ismail Fire. But you can see if it is. Uh, it takes on a direct Maful B. So it's Mutaddi. Uh, it comes with Ba. Knowledge comes with lamb. Mm. 
as far as I could recall, we studied in um, AMSA also that it comes in the passive form and with ba, then it is translated like it is known. Mm. Uh, yeah. Let me just check something else. Mm. Um, Sister Fahima can correct me. I think she has done AMSA also pretty well. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so Arafa, Arifu. Fatulati Lazim would have to be half. Okay, there's another one. Tulati Lazim would have to be half. Arafa Shaya. Yeah, Adrakahu, Yani, Adamahu, okay. عرف ب يعني بمعنى اعترف to acknowledge when it comes with عرف when it comes with ب it means to acknowledge something and I don't think that's the meaning here العارف بشيء يعني it's not to acknowledge but to know even the least bit even a little bit yeah so I, I would still go or say that this ba is Zaida. I'll still look at it as Zaida. The Noah of even a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Sister Alam, can, so, can I, can I... Sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. And then I was just asking, sister. So this is Marifa followed by the Jar Majur, Shibu Jumla. So nothing to do with that, like that? Yeah, you can you can look at it as Shibul Jumla Mutalak to Hal, I, I wouldn't say it's Hal. No, either it's Mutalik to Arif or it is Mafal Bihi to Arif. Those are the two possibilities. And I think either way, it it kind of means the same thing because the meaning doesn't change. So if it is if you say Al Arif will be shayin, uh, the one who knows or recognizes uh, a little bit, which is more or less the same thing as uh, I, I think Mafal Bihi really makes more sense. He knows what Bishay in, uh, uh, even a little bit, because it answers the question what? What does he know? Al Arifu Bimada. He knows what? Right? So it makes sense as a Mafal Bihi. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can, can I just repeat my Arab that I have written so that I just want to be sure I'm on the correct uh -huh. track. Like, Jazakallah khair, la yamliku arifu bishayim min asrari tarki. So, yamliku is the fail and arif is the file. Okay, uh -huh. then we have uh, B is zaida, but shayin is actually the fool of arif. Okay, uh -huh. and then asrari tarki is a mutallik attached to shayin. We can uh -huh. say it is min, giving a clarification. So mm -hmm. we have a fail, yamliku, file, arifu, and then the whole of the bucket is attached to arifu. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just like a oh, so this is something, yeah, I was, somebody posted here, arif, let's see. Uh, so it says posted here, arif, acquainted, conversant, familiar, comes with that. Ah. Uh, Expert. Ah, okay. Okay. Also, in that sense, it comes with ba. If it is arif and b to mean the expert that I was talking about initially. So the expert of anything at all. Of even a little bit. Al arif will be ah, I see what you mean. Like the S it has the it comes with the meaning of, of an expert of cocaine. Al Arifu B Tabh or Al Arifu B Tadris, I don't know, teaching or tutoring or something like that. I think that would be the the implication. The Noah of a Noah of in English would translate like that, even though it's not a mudaf mudafile. But again, to me, I still feel like it's Bazaida. <laughs> because a Noah of what? It answers the question what? Noah of cooking or no of something 
how how but can yeah. you reconcile these things? I mean, if you're expert, then how can you belittle him and, and tell him that he knows even if little bit? But he's an expert. He knows maximum, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. It's like trashing him, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, again, I think he's just trying to elevate the speech of Allah. He's like saying, even if you you are an expert of anything, like you can never, and like this speech is far beyond. Okay. You can also take it as the um, one who's familiar with any uh, thing from the secrets of whatever. Yeah. You cannot yeah. control. It's, yeah, it's not little, Sister Inham. It's anything. Asrari, yeah, anything. It's not little. Even right. I was Shai thinking in asrar, tarkib. It's an expert. Hmm. Because asrar tarkib is not for layman, right? Yeah. So bishayin is not little. It's if any uh, and the expert who knows the secrets. Okay. okay. So the idea is the even one who secret, knows anything. Even mm. one secret. It's not little. It's an expert who is familiar with the secret of composition. Hmm. Okay. An expert so of anything from the secret of composition or mm -hmm. yeah. expert or anyone who is familiar with because Arif B ah. is to be familiar. Yeah, you can also look at it that way. Anyone who is familiar with the secrets of Tarkib will recognize that. Right. And la yamliku illa an yasjuda. We have just to jump there. Right. Yeah. He cannot help it's going himself to understand it. except yeah. 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 So yeah. bishay in min asrari al tarkib is just uh, tied to arif. It, it's not tied to yamlik. No, no, it's not. It's a bucket by itself. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. this part is one is inside that bucket. Yeah, you're right. Yes, yeah. yeah, so Bisha in Min Asrar Tarkib is just uh, between parentheses, just explaining the Arif. Hmm. I'm not expert in grammar, just a quick question. Um I thought when you say maf'ul, you have to have a verb. Isn't it? <laughs> Mafoul because you, you, yeah, you keep saying that this is maf'ul to arif. Yes. But there's no verb between al arif so, so and min asrar. Uh -huh. You have certain uh, isms, well, mm -hmm. not, not isms, but certain sirahs like isim fa'il, mm -hmm. isim, fa isim maf'ul, mm -hmm. masdar. Mm -hmm. This particular mm -hmm. bucket, whatever, what are they called? Uh, containers. Mm -hmm. They can act as a fa'il. Mm -hmm. And what do we mean by they can act as a fa'il? We mean that they can have a fa'il and they can also have a maf'ul bihi. Or either, if it's a maf'ul bihi, then probably just a fa'il. Right? Yes, but in that case, it is a masdar, right? Or isim fa'il or isim maf'ul. Or isim fa'il. Okay, got it. Yeah. Three things. Isim fa'il, isim maf'ul, yes. masdar. These three things they mm -hmm. can take on a fail. Uh, uh, sorry, they can take on a fail, uh, and mm -hmm. a mafoul or a mafoul bihi. Okay, even if we don't see a verb. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, for example, all would be construction from uh, is um, like a a jumla uh, fi'aliya and not jumla ismiya. Not a must. Not a must. For example, okay. if I say, "Huwa akilun." Who are akilu, akilu mm -hmm. He is the eater of the the apple. Mm -hmm. So akilun, what what kind of a word is that? That is it's in fa'il. And a tufaha mm -hmm. is what he ate. It's answering the question mm -hmm. what. So a tufaha here is the maf'ul bihi of akilun, which is the it's in fa'il. The way I would say like mudaf mudaf later, right? Isn't it? No. It's going to be tufahata. Mm. It's not mm. akilu tufahati. Okay. It's akilun tufahata. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's new information. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> You're, welcome. Welcome. You're welcome. Sister, now right. we have M who is the fail 
and uh-huh. our arif was the file then uh-huh. how do we know that web uh, connectivity matlab jar majroor aur mutalliq should go to file or the file system how it is you have to translate because it because i thought mc was the file and arif was the file so anything uh, mutalliq should go towards the file right or is there no. something that goes towards the file also okay so let me repeat what i said when you have a jar majroor it's going to be a mutaalliq when you have a dharf it's going to be a mutaalliq we know this so whenever you have a mutaalliq it can go mm-hmm. it can connect again alqa uh, mutaalliq to connect to join to attach what is it connecting to what is it attaching to so it could be anything mm-hmm. it's not necessarily that it is a- attaching to a fa'il or a khabar that's the idea that we you know when we were learning from the beginning we we learned mubtada khabar mutaalliq and the mutaalliq is mutaalliq bil khabar done we go to jumla fi'liya fi'il fa'il mutaalliq bil fi'il done okay. but now we are realizing that mutaalliq it's not just always attached to a fi'il or a khabar it can be attached mm-hmm. to a fa'il like in this case it can be mm-hmm. attached to a maf'ul bihi it can be attached to a sifa it can be attached to a tamiz it can be attached to anything it's just connect attaching itself to something connecting itself to something right mm-hmm. so for you to get yeah. the right meaning you try and translate mm-hmm. it and see if i if i translate it as mutaalliq bil fi'l what meaning is mm-hmm. it giving me and is it mm-hmm. the right meaning if i translate it as mutaalliq to the arif what meaning is it giving mm-hmm. me and that's why in in tafsir in mm-hmm. books of grammar you won't say mutaalliq bil fi'l you won't see mutaalliq mm-hmm. bil khabar you would see mutaalliq bi arif mutaalliq bi yamliku it will say tell you exactly what it is mutaalliq to mm-hmm. because it can be mutaalliq mm-hmm. to so many different things mm-hmm. right and even if we just yeah. say mutaalliq bil fi'l there could be like mm-hmm. three fi'ls in that one sentence which fi'l Mm-hmm. So you see so you that's why they always mention mutaalliq to this mm-hmm. mutaalliq to that yeah specifically so we need yeah. to know the translation first only then yes. we can say to mutaalliq to what na system yeah you want, you need to understand the meaning and that's why i was explaining what the author is trying to say initially so mm-hmm. you understand the mm-hmm. meaning so that when we break it down you see oh i see how that makes sense kind of yeah jazakallah khair ji Okay. Any other questions there? Um so so for me to understand can I say uh, from al arif to tarkeeb is a jumla ismiya with arif as the mubtada and that's why bishayyan and min israr are the two mutalliqs to arif and that whole thing is a file of yamliku. Okay yeah that works. Okay. But, yeah that works I guess yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. Much much easier. <laughs> We were struggling so much here. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy way of looking at it. Yeah. Perfect. Any other questions or oh, or simple clarifications like those ones? <laughs> Making all eyes easy. Not not a clarification, but I would like to share my thoughts that uh I would like to stick with Sister Alham's transition that if you if you know even a bit, you know why I'm thinking is because the author is emphasizing the usage of words. Now, when we have someone who knows, he he can simply say alim, but he is specifically using the word arif. Now, arif, we know that someone who has a marifa, someone whose eyes of the heart are open, and that is a context that he is given that even if. it uh, his heart is open even to a least bit of extent it will have an impact so by the usage of the word arif he simply does not mean anybody who knows like a normal scholar like an alim but by arif he means someone whose heart is alive and is it is taking some clues and uh, so even if he takes a little bit clues even if his heart is a little bit soft it will have an impact so i think uh, you know bishayin goes with even if a little thing he knows and 
by considering that i would take arif as not a normal word like any man who knows it is not any man who knows it is a man whose heart is open this is how i would like to take this so he i mean i would expect this author to use the words very uh, explicitly i mean he is not using the word al alim it's a safe way to use al alim bi shay min asrar but he is using the word arif he means something behind this word right yeah so i think it could go both ways depending on how you understand it so la if you say al arif like is the ism fa'il of um arafa ya'rifu uh in that sense that that just means anyone who knows like a nova a nova so you translate it as a nova or a person who recognizes uh you just take it like that and then therefore it means anybody who recognizes bi shay in anything at all min asrar at tarkib even just a little so anything at all then then that would translate that by as zaida because anyone who recognizes anything at all But if you take it al arif b as an expert, then you have to put this together and say the expert of anything from now you you can't say the expert of anything at all because now you can you you don't you, you don't have to translate the ba the ba comes with arif so now you just say the expert of anything from the secrets of composition cannot help themselves so it depends I is he talking about an expert. or he's just talking about anybody who knows anything at all so i think both ways i don't know which one <laughs> is he talking about an expert or is just talking about a normal person who recognizes anything at all from and i think because we are not really experts and we are recognizing things from the quran i would imagine he's talking about just anybody who recognizes anything from this special composition we cannot help ourselves but to prestation so yeah that's why i'm going with that uh idea because the whole point again he's trying to convince us that or not really convince us but to prove to us that the quran is inimitable it's miraculous it's beautifully written and ma- magnificent so that'll be my view on that oh wow we are can you yes. can you just uh... Can I just repeat one thing? An yeah. Allah, uh, there is an an here, and uh, the an yes judu yes juda. This mazdar mawl is the isam of that an. Okay, yeah. and then this is the whole uh, jumla failure. The the whole thing is attached with an yes juda. So like an yes juda, this is the fail plus file, and li sahabil hazil kalam is the mutalik bil fail number one. Ijlalan is hal and is. Push one is hal number two, and this whole bracket. Anna yes juda li sahibi hazil kalami ejlalan wa khushu one is fi mahali nasab attached to the an of la. Am I yeah. getting it right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that whole thing would and together it will make the most master mu awal and together it will be the istithna, the exception. exception okay and what will be the okay uh, this is like struck upon by an okay so it is fi mahalli nasab okay but uh, like we have if you have this type of construction so what will be the arab of it the arab of masdar muawwal no for this uh, whole uh, an and plus the whole jumla musta is istisna the exception is this now so yeah. this is mansub here fi mahalli nasab ya fi mahalli nasab okay okay jazakallah khair yeah come yeah i think i think we've been on in, uh, at this section for a while and i think our brains charges are low i'm with you ss i'm also tired to be honest <laughs> it was a really brain draining session i think and i think it's it's safe enough we just stop here uh maybe next week when we are fresh we can just go through quickly again this section before we go on to another brain draining session because i think this is we we might just spend the entire session next week on just this one line probably because it's that brain draining i think inshallah khair and i'm sorry ss you didn't get to read 
because I know you wanted uh, to read, but inshallah next week we'll give you priority. Um, then you can read. Alhamdulillah. Well, I'm learning so much from all the sisters around and you also, Sister Ilan. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you with more knowledge. I mean, Alhamdulillah. I am also yes, learning. Yes, even I have not done EMSA. Even I have not done EMSA, but I'm glimpse, getting some glimpses from here. Alhamdulillah. That's great. All right. Thank you guys. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadun la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah.